Hi everyone. Today I want to talk about a topic that's very dear to my heart. I say this because I'm making this video after a couple of weeks during which many students have withdrawn from their units because they are unable to go on with the load to which they've committed themselves. I really feel for these students who have started out with the best of intentions, genuinely believing that they would be able to cope. I'm concerned that when they withdraw they won't come back and yet they started with such hopes and dreams. So this video is a gentle reminder to think carefully about all your commitments before enrolling for semester two and think again when you're enrolling for semester one next year. During orientation, clear messages are given to students about overcommitting themselves with their study loads, but there are always cases in which students still enrol in more units than they can handle when combined with all the other commitments and scheduled activities they have. It's understood that many students have to work to survive at university. However, it's essential that a balance between work, study and home life is established early in the study programme. Many of our students are mature age and fitting study in with a job, a family and several social commitments. Some students who have been with us for a long time have recognised that it's not possible to do all these things and also have a full-time study load. Accordingly, they've paced themselves through the course, often over seven or eight years, and are just about to complete their last units and graduate. They've realised that to get through the course as fast as possible is not the best way when you have other commitments and work responsibilities as well. Next semester I'll be including some of these student stories in the blog. Even students who are coming directly from school and are young, energetic and ambitious need to think carefully about their study commitments and fitting in paid work and other outside commitments. A full-time job and full-time study don't work. You can do a full-time study load, but it's important to decide which aspects of your life outside university can be sacrificed. Less paid work, a reduction in social activities, reduce your gym program from five to three times a week, create a new roster for the family meals, negotiate a time when you can be free of family commitments by bringing in family support or bargaining with your partner, it's important to be honest about what you can do and creative and focused about your use of time. I'll talk about using your time effectively in another post. I've talked to you before about the amount of study that's expected per week. 10 hours per unit is the minimum time that you should allow for your study. If you do less than that, it will start to show in the quality of your participation and assignments and will be reflected in your results. Some of you may have experienced this already when your first assignments were returned. I can't say strongly enough that if you overload yourself with commitments, the chances are that you will start to founder quite quickly. If you manage to keep going beyond week 6, it's like likely that you will tumble around week 9. Some students can keep going for one or two semesters, but eventually the overload takes its toll, as it's unlikely that you can keep up this pace for four years. My greatest concern is that when students start to take this tumble, they sometimes drop out and find it difficult to start again. If there's a chance to reassess a student study program, it's often possible to salvage some units and enable students to keep going with some units completed rather than dropped and a more manageable load. Faster is not better in a study program. If you are able to spread your study over a longer period, and do it thoroughly and carefully, rather than stretched out too thinly, you'll learn more and you'll learn it well and have a chance to enjoy the journey too. <clears throat> this is particularly for students who have many commitments other than study. You can do between one and four units per semester and it's best to choose the study program that suits your life choices. In the text of the blog I'm including a link to the weekly planner which I've actually um, shown you before. It was uh, previously included in the time management posts. In order to work out how many units should, you should be studying, I'd like to suggest that you do the following. Print off the planner, fill in your current work commitments, put in all other scheduled commitments, including those that you have to do for others, 
swimming or music lessons for kids, Saturday sport, meetings with friends, church, clubs, film society, everything that you will normally do or have to do during a week. Be honest and don't forget to include your scheduled exercise, gym, swimming, jogging and so on. Even if it's good for you, it still has to go on your schedule. Now look at your planner and work out where you are going to schedule chunks of time for your study. These must be available times that won't be changed or given up for more important activities or interruptions. At this stage you'll be looking for 10 hours per unit. So if you're doing one unit you'll need to find 10 hours that can be dedicated solely to study. If you're doing four units you'll be looking for 40 hours for study. If you can't find enough time for your study with the units you're intending to enrol in, of course allowing for time to sleep well, eat and some relaxation time, you're probably planning to do too much and should think about cutting back. If you're not sure which units to keep and which to postpone, contact your course support officers. They are absolute experts and will give you the advice that you need. If you need further advice, talk to me or to your course coordinator. As you consider your study load for semester two, please think carefully about this important decision. And if you need more advice, please don't hesitate to ask. Good luck to you all.